Yeah, they're like, and they're kind of judgy about it. I don't know why, but I just feel shame financially stable enough to get a warehouse. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brenna. I own Brenna M Co, where we spread mental health awareness and positivity through products. Today we are joined by Sarah. She owns SP Handmade, which she makes clay earrings. <gasps> I'm not wearing earrings today. Oh my god! You're not. I'm not even wearing my own products either. So that's it's okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not wearing any of your products either. <laughs> okay, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because. Not to just jump right in, but do you, because you own a business that you can wear yep. or use the products, yeah. do you feel every day you have to be wearing it or using it? Yes, I do. And then if I ever, when I first started making clay earrings, I was buying from other clay makers because I wanted to see their quality and yep. I wanted to see how they did things up close and in person. And so now if I ever wear those earrings, they're like, oh, did you make those? And I was like, no, <laughs> but it's a long story. Yeah, it's just another clay maker, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, can you make some for me like that? And well, I don't want to steal their designs. Yeah. So, yeah, so I always, and I get asked that too. You make earrings, why don't you wear earrings? And I was, sometimes I just forget. Yeah, <laughs> well, I I never wear earrings. I have the, my singles and doubles pierced, but I just, I never wear earrings because they just irritate my ears and they're just yeah. so heavy no matter how small they are. And so... Yeah. I feel if I sold earrings, that'd just be weird because I never yeah. wear them. But you do wear earrings often. I do. I usually do wear earrings, but I forgot today. Yeah. So, but, and then sometimes I don't wear clay earrings. Sometimes I just wear gold hoops or whatever it is. Just something simple because I don't need to dress up. Yeah. I just want something in my ears, so. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely do feel the pressure to wear my own stuff every day today i'm not wearing anything of mine you're just wearing I'm, all black i'm wearing all black literally <laughs> and <laughs> some days i'm just i don't really want to wear one of my sweatshirts or one of my shirts today but i feel obligated to because if i'm not wearing my products then other people aren't gonna want to buy my products because i don't wear them yeah i definitely like can much. see why that would be annoying i guess but at the same time too it's you're allowed to wear other clothing and mm -hmm. it's not you're going out in public constantly and i mean even when you record for youtube you don't have to necessarily be wearing yeah and then if you wear stuff over the course of a couple of days or if you record <laughs> over the course of a couple of days then you can wear your stuff intermittently throughout that yeah i don't know i just feel so weird when i don't i feel naked kind of yeah but yeah at the same time on the other side of that somebody who for me personally, I am not super confident in my business. I ha I've only been doing it for, that's bad. I shouldn't say that I'm not confident because I am very confident in my business and I am very proud of my business. But at the same time, I'm yeah, I made these. Don't look at my ears or mm -hmm. just, yeah, it's fine. I don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just more shy, I guess, in that, in that sense. But, well, and I... I don't know what it is, but every time someone asks me what I do and I say, oh, I am a designer or I own a business, someone can ask me what it is and I'm like, oh, apparel and accessories that spreads mental health mm -hmm. awareness. And I don't know why, but I just feel ashamed to say that. Yeah. In a way, even yes. though my business is successful, but I think it's just the culture growing up. I don't know. People are just are so used to others working for big companies or other small companies and not only their own yeah i guess sometimes the response that i get oh i because I, i'm a teacher full-time so i'm a teacher oh but i also own this small business and then oh well what is your business well i make polymer clay earrings and they're like, oh yeah, they're like, and they're hmm. kind of judgy about it and well it's a hobby of mine but it's very calming i love doing the craft like yeah. whatever i love doing craft shows selling online whatever but then they're just oh okay yeah it's i feel it's totally different at craft shows though when yes people are seeing your stuff and they're like oh my gosh this is so cute do you have a storefront or do mm -hmm. you sell these anywhere else or are you online I'm like, oh i'm just on you should totally get a storefront all that stuff and that boost yes i don't know you can't i can't think of the word boost my confidence yeah. in my business and but then when you just tell random not random people but people what yeah. you do and they kind of just mm. outside of a craft it's, you've never seen my stuff so yeah. you have no place to judge 
Right. Yeah. And it's, I don't think that people are necessarily judging maliciously or they're trying to be mean about it, but sometimes it just comes off that way because they maybe weren't expecting you to say that or yeah. whatever. I think some people think of, oh, I run a small business as more an established business, a physical store, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't do that as a teacher. That doesn't make sense. To yeah. Me. So I don't know. It's, it's weird how sharing your business everybody has a different experience yeah with it, so. and it's not I'm ashamed of it right no but i'm definitely proud of my business but i don't have that uber confidence of this is what i do all the time mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah yeah what is your end goal for your business i have no idea same <laughs> <laughs> um i started it as a hey, this is really fun to make. I don't need a thousand pair of earrings. I can sell this. I could maybe make a little bit of money off of this. Mm -hmm. It's my hobby. It's my side thing. Um, and as you might know, teaching doesn't pay fantastic. <laughs> Even though I think so, you guys get paid a lot more. I, agree. I cannot do what you do. Um, you know, it's... It's something really fun to do. If I could end up doing it and have be having lots and lots of sales and end up really successful and maybe opening some sort of storefront, that would be super cool. But that's not my goal. Yeah. Like, I'm not in this business to do that. I'm in this business because it brings me joy and yep. it might last another year. It might last another 10 years. Who the heck knows? Exactly. But I just... I do it for enjoyment, not necessarily for a specific end goal. Yeah. I I get that question so many times, I feel, because some people are oh, do you have a storefront? Do you mm -hmm. only sell online? All this stuff, and I'll be like, oh, like, I'm only online. I do this all at my home. And they're like, you do it out of your home? And I'm like, yeah. Like, I kind of feel a little bit of embarrassment there. Yeah. But... My end game, I think, for my business is to be able to have a designated building for it, not necessarily a storefront, kind of a warehouse. Yes. And I would love to employ my family because my dad works so hard and he just got a promotion and so now he's going to be even more busier and my mom doesn't really like her job, but she still does it. My two sisters, all that stuff. Eventually, I want to have coal maybe help me with YouTube or packaging orders. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be really cool to say that I work with, well, he'll be my husband by then yeah. probably, but my fiance and yeah, that's, I just, I want to have just a designated building for my business and maybe eventually I'll do a little pop-ups here and there, yep. but I feel I can't do that as of now. Not because I don't have the space. I could probably rent a place to do a pop-up or something, but I feel I don't have enough of an audience in our mm -hmm. area. Yeah, I do craft shows and everything, but not everyone is going to follow you that buys from you or visits your booth, you know? And yeah. so I feel like once I get a bigger audience in mm -hmm. this area, then I could start doing pop-ups because I, this sounds so bad, but yeah, every order I'm so grateful for even one, but if you do a pop-up and you only have two people show up mm -hmm. the entire day, I feel that's just a bit embarrassing to yourself because maybe you didn't market it enough or you just don't have that audience in your area, so. Yeah. But yeah. While you were talking, I just <clears throat> kind of thought of this idea. Do we have in our town some sort of store collective where you have lots of small businesses? Yeah, uh, Scribble Lady. <clears throat> she does that? She will bring your products in and because I have some I have some of my stuff there yeah. I have my pride collection there and you bring it in or whatever and she does um, 60 40 and so you get 60 mm -hmm. and then she gets 40 you pay for everything obviously but she'll put your stuff in her store hmm. and do it because I was thinking how cool would that be if a group of small businesses, and I've talked with other friends about this would be kind of cool to do, but a group of small businesses, maybe we together rent a warehouse and have different corners of the warehouse belongs mm -hmm. to our business. And then maybe that is eventually some sort of storefront where 
we collectively pay for. Yeah. I don't know. That's just something that I thought of while you were saying that. Yeah. Hey, that's something actually that small businesses could do. Maybe not necessarily just your business or just my yeah. business. Because I feel it'd be really hard to fill a storefront with just clay earrings. Yeah. I feel like no offense, but I think you need a like, little bit I, more. I can fill a 10 by 10 <clears throat> foot tent yeah. at a perfectly. crash show perfectly. Because you got your displays, but filling... A store. store. And mind you, you can always rent smaller or bigger stores and make them what you need them to yeah. be. But I couldn't fill a whole store. Even the two of us together, yeah. let's say we opened up a, a storefront together, mm-hmm. I don't think you and I could fill a store I don't either. Think so. so you'd have to have a lot of small business. So that's what I was thinking yeah. of when you were. Well, and um, thinking about opening a store, I feel like you have to have so much inventory. Yeah. And my business is just not there. I, oh. granted, I'm in my home. But I can barely, I have enough, barely enough space for my inventory now. Right. And I feel like I'm overflowing. But I'm not financially stable enough to get a warehouse. Right. So. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally get that. And clay earrings are small. So it's really easy for me to store them. But then now I'm, I'm prepping for Christmas. It's barely November and I'm prepping for Christmas mm-hmm, right now. So am I. But I'm where am I putting all this Christmas earrings? Because I haven't launched them yet. I'm not going to launch them for a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Now I just have earrings coming out of my ears. Yep. Um, <laughs> and so, I don't know. It's And I have a room a little bit bigger than your room that we're sitting mm-hmm. in. Um, but I utilize all the space for other things. So I don't really store my stuff anywhere. Yeah. I have to put it in random places. So... I mean, eventually, I was thinking about, yeah, a studio space would be really nice. Mm -hmm. But I also love the convenience of, I'm sitting on the couch, I'm bored, I'm going to go downstairs and make something. Yep. You know, so it's, I don't know, there's there's upsides and downsides to wanting a separate space from your home. Yes. It's so nice because... I am not a morning riser. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, if people get me out of bed before nine, you are so lucky. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't know what it is. I'm a night owl, so I stay yep. up and do stuff. And it's not, I'm just sitting there on my phone or right. watching TV stuff. the whole time. I'm doing stuff until I literally yes. go to bed. And so it's nice being able to wake up at nine or 10 o'clock. And that's another thing. When I post, good morning, it's 11 o'clock, and I'm like, I hope people don't know it's actually 11 o'clock my time, and I'm waking <laughs> up right now, but yeah. it's so nice to just be able to get up, shower, get dressed, come in the office. Yeah. But there are days where I wish that I had a separate space. I have just been getting so overwhelmed with everything that I have going on right mm-hmm. now, and so it'd just be nice to come home and not think about business. Right. Well, that's kind of how I am with my teaching job, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people say that teachers work so hard um, and that they always work extra hours outside of the home well, or outside of school at home. But I also feel I'm not doing myself. No, I'm just moving on. No, I know. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, I also feel I'm not doing myself mentally justice if I'm working outside of my house yeah so right now it, at my point in my life working outside of school is a no-go for me like mm-hmm. I will not work on school stuff outside of the school but I will work on my business stuff non-stop constantly because that's what brings me joy so mm-hmm. like if you're getting to a point of my work is bleeding into my home life then it's time for a good you need to separate the two yeah but if it's still something that's no i'm at home and i'm working but it's bringing me joy i'm enjoying it then i wouldn't stress too much about that i guess does that make sense yeah i just feel whenever i'm just kind of sitting on the couch and you know winding down I, sh- I could be doing this i could be doing that why am i not doing this constantly in my mind needs to work it needs to be multitasking and i've talked about this with my dad a lot because we are literally the same person and we both don't feel accomplished if we don't do anything i can't take a day and just lay on the couch when i'm sick i still work because i have to feel accomplished for the day and a different example if this isn't coming across a little bit better for viewers or you you know um 
my dad, when we go to the lake, it's the time to relax, right? Yeah. No, my dad has several projects to do that weekend for the lake. Oh, yeah. Projects that don't need to be done until next year. Because yeah. my grandfather passed away in April, and so we took over the lake home. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of things needed to be done, especially right away. But some things could have waited until the following summer, but... Mm-hmm. My dad couldn't do that. Yeah. Because we're just the same person that always has to be go, 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 and... Yeah. Yeah. No, I I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, And then, too, as a small business owner, though, you wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, as a teacher, can can go home because I've done the job of a teacher, but then, as a business owner, you can't just go home and have done your pop-up store. You've done a craft show. Well, now you have to go restock inventory. You have to do all your books. You have to, you know, whatever it is that you need to do, counting, social media, marketing, all of that is your job. So I I can relate to both of, nope, it's my time. I'm out of school. I don't have to work. Mm -hmm. But then as a small business owner in me too, I'm well, but now I need to budget and now I need to make new stuff. And yeah, so I totally, totally get that. Yeah. It's... It's just, it's hard to know when to take a break. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Even when I'm on vacation, I can't take a break from work. Because if I do, that plummets my sales, that plummets my engagement, my reach. That's why I schedule a lot of stuff, especially if I'm going to be gone. And I try not to do work, but it's just kind of hard to, especially like if you're sitting in an airport. Yeah. It's so hard not to do work. Well, and then what else are you going to do? Just sit yeah. and stare at people? <laughs> so you, I mean, watch people that. watching is pretty fun. <laughs> it, yes, I totally agree with you. <laughs> and we come from a small town. Small town. It's a big small town. It's a 40. That, there's 80 in this area. 80,000? No yeah. It's it's a big town, but it's also still small in comparison to others. People anyway. are going to hate on you for saying it's a small town. <laughs> it's, it's a big small town. It is. I can, it really I can is. go to a store and know something. We don't have Ikea. So we're a small town. <laughs> I want Ikea. We have to drive four hours mm-hmm. to go to Ikea. And we don't no. have a Dunkin'. I know. I know. You feel salty so, about that. I'm so salty. Um, now I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. People watching, small town. Oh, as a small town, <laughs> when you go and you travel and you're in an airport for a bigger city, it you see so many different people Mm -hmm. and there's you know you might not know somebody that's walking by you so you can just stare and you'll never see them again what in the world are you doing (laughs) (laughs) yes yes um but no that's what i was gonna say about my business it doesn't make sense for me at this time to have a separate space outside of my home Mm -hmm. but for your business you are big enough that you could have a separate space and then it would give you a nice break a nice yep. divide between okay i'm at home home is home now i'm at work work is work yeah i think my my goal it's kind of short term or maybe long term but my goal in 2024 is to be in a warehouse by may i like it that, that's my goal and my other goal is to this is not going to happen but you you have to shoot for the stars of course my goal is to reach 100k subscribers by my birthday which is january 6th on on youtube yeah sorry okay Uh, you're definitely over that's instagram yeah that's Um, yeah subscribers that's that's a good goal and i know i've been saying this a lot but and then maybe I'll get a new camera. <laughs> I called her out not that long ago because she got a new computer. I was for sure you're getting a new camera. <laughs> everyone, everyone voted that I got a new camera. That's hysterical. And I'm, hmm, plot twist. <laughs> got a computer. That's so funny. It just, financially, it made more sense to get a new yes. computer before a camera. Have I dropped this camera 20 times in the past week? Yes. Probably. Yes, I have. I'm surprised it's working right now. <laughs> but my computer just kept crashing, and everything for my business is on my computer. Yes. So. Yes. Well, you even bought an external hard drive to yeah. like help with that, too. Yeah, and so it was like still crashing. Yeah. So it was just kind of time to get a new computer. 
mm-hmm. push back the new camera. Well, now you have another goal for yourself. Mm-hmm. Of yeah. Like, yep, hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. That's my goal. I'll get a yep. new camera because you have to do what makes sense for your business. I mean, yep. you can't overstretch yourself. Of, cool, I'll get a new camera and a new computer, and now I have a huge credit card bill. You know what yep. I mean? You have to. You have to pace yourself. Yeah, somewhere. exactly. And like, it doesn't make sense to do all the big things at one time. Well, <clears throat> I get a lot of my tech from Best Buy. And so I have a Best Buy credit card because when I got my new laptop by senior year of college, I also used it for business. But yep. when I got that and when I bought my camera, I put it on my Best Buy credit card. When I got my AirPod Max Pros... I use that for editing. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I use them for editing, so that's business. Yes. And so I put that on the Best Buy credit card, and I got it paid off. It only took me a year to pay off everything. Mm-hmm. Granted, I got the my headphones last August, and then the year before that, that's when I got the camera mm-hmm. and my computer. But it, before a year was up of having those items, I paid off the card. And so at this last time when I paid it off, I said... I'm going to wait a couple months because I've been wanting a new camera and mm-hmm. I was going to get a new camera and I was I'm just going to give myself a couple months not having a credit card payment for this stuff. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I have a different credit card for business, yep. other business expenses, but I was, I'm going to take six months off and I'm not going to do anything and then all of a sudden my computer kept crashing and it's it was almost six months since I paid it off and so... Yeah, I just used my Best Buy credit card. No interest for 12 months. Yeah. I mean, sometimes those Mm -hmm. credit cards, for example, I just bought a new iPad. Mm -hmm. Did I need a new iPad? Probably not, but I wanted one. Nah, business expense. It's a write-off. If you you buy from Apple, you can trade in your iPad. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I traded in my iPad, and I got a good chunk of change back because my iPad was in really great condition. Yep. But anyway... I ended up opening up an Apple card because then you can do a payment plan. I didn't have to pay for it all at once, and you get really good deals back. So, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. So, have you used AI for your business? Or, like, yeah. what do you use AI for with your business? I have used AI before a couple times because sometimes when I know I should be putting out new products, but I have no idea what the heck I want to put out. I will go to chat GPT and I will just put in a couple words, keywords. So, uh, vibrant, positive, and uplifting message mm-hmm. for a sticker idea. And it literally gives you a full detailed thing and I'll draw it out. Sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. It's just to kind of get my creativity flowing. I think I have one design that I actually used from AI. And that was the You Are Stronger Than You Think glassware Mm -hmm. cup. And then it was supposed to be a sticker design. But then I changed it into a full cup design, you know. Yeah. And so I've used that. I've used it for a couple captions of mine just because I hadn't I I'm so bad with captions I yeah. sound so stupid I feel whenever I write captions because I'm like, like I want to say oh, coffee day you know that stuff but I feel like it needs to be meaningful yeah <laughs> and so I don't know I used it a couple times but it really did not help with yeah. engagement I feel I have been finding that I, well, I hate writing product descriptions. Oh, yeah, I use it for all my product descriptions on Shop. I mean, I have a ton of products. Mm -hmm. I I carry polymer clay earrings, which is not a ton. But but, they're different. But every pair is different. And so when I make a new listing, I have to make a listing for every single pair. And I'm like, I don't want to come up with creative crap every time. So I use ChatGPT to help me with that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Do you use the one that's in Shopify? Um, I started using ChatGPT, but now I typically will just use the one in Shopify, yeah. which is very comparable. Yeah, I've been using, for the past couple months, I've been using the one in Shopify. Yeah. Just write a cute little thing. Yeah. Because I don't want it to just be, I don't know, the item description. No, obviously it's an item description, but I mean details of it or the color mm-hmm. what 
color I'm wearing or what I prefer. Yeah. I don't want it just to be that. I want it to be something playful. And yep. Yeah. I love that you can put in all of the requirements of tell me in 150 characters or 150 words. Tell me about the product quality. Tell me about... And then you list off the things that you want it to include mm -hmm. and you'll just include it. And I love that. Yeah. It makes making online stuff easier <laughs> yeah a lot easier. well and it's just so hard to be like, describe stuff yeah for example let's say my shirt this one right here yep okay i put a heart on it yep black shirt with a white heart perfect for dressing up or down yep. that's what would mine would be yep. but like, when you use the ai feature in shopify it's mm -hmm. It makes it sound way better. You can yeah. type that, what I just said, in that, and they'll make it sound way better. Oh, yeah. And you can change the tone, like mm -hmm. playful. Or, playful, expert. Um, yeah, expert. Um, persuasive. Yeah, that's the word I was trying to think of. And that you can include emojis mm -hmm. with it, too. I think it's so handy. And then I also, so I've been... I just recently switched to Shopify mm -hmm. from Square. Um, nothing wrong with Square, I just, the features of Shopify better. And for what my business needed, that's why I went with it. Anyway, that could be a whole other video. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I really like with Shopify is there are so many resources out there to help you with your website and make mm -hmm. your SEO and all that stuff. And one of the things that I saw was people who update their website regularly tend to get more traffic to their website. And so one thing that I try to do is write a blog post once a month, but as a teacher, as a business owner, as mm -hmm. a human, it, I just sometimes forget or I run out of time or whatever it is. And I have ideas of blog posts that I want to make and I have put into chat GPT write me a blog post about this thing include these five topics and it will and it's brilliant I obviously will go through and edit it and yeah and make it, it your own. own change the tone a little bit but it just saves so much time that and mm -hmm. emails I don't want to say the same hey come shop at SD exactly Made every craft show new lunch yeah so emails and blog posts is my go-to for yeah I need to up my email game. My emails, I feel like they're so boring. At least you send them. <laughs> oh, God. I tell them, new arrivals. Yeah. And, okay, I got this comment the other day. And it irritated me. Okay. S like, so much. Where I wanted to go off on a rage. And be mean very mean have old school brand up pop out and be i'm gonna you know and oh, this person commented and they were i heard i i see that you were uh, you, you graduated with a marketing degree yeah that may have helped you to grow your socials but what about sales doesn't look like that's really helping or some of that <sighs> and i'm yes i have a marketing degree does that mean I'm an expert at marketing? No. Do I have big social media platforms? Yes. I would say I do. Do I get a ton of sales on launch day? No. I'm just not that type of business. Yep. Like, that's just not what my... That's just how it's always been. And I'm fine with that. Now, obviously, I want it to grow, but I'm fine with that. Yeah. And I... On launch day, I will get orders. Mm -hmm. But then as a couple days go on, I'll get more orders those days too. And I just randomly get orders here and there. But it just irritated me because, yes, I got a degree in business marketing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it prepared me to market my own business products. Yeah. I feel like it's so much harder to obviously like you love all your products that you make or design or mm -hmm. you know all that stuff but it's so hard to market it does that make sense yes you have the knowledge and skill and expertise to 
apply your marketing degree to any business. Yes. But you didn't learn at school in your degree mm -hmm. how to specifically market for your business. I yes. Mean, you could have created a company where you pick up dog poop. Mm -hmm. Your marketing would be totally different. So you yeah. have the umbrella of, I know how to market, but then it's under the umbrella yeah. all of the different things that you could be marketing. Yeah. I mean... And I felt in my marketing classes, it really just taught you about how other business market their products. For example, McDonald's. McDonald's has different menu items in different countries. Mm -hmm. That's how they, that's part of their marketing strategy is by tr mm, not transitioning into the culture of where they're at, but adding that culture into yes. theirs. And also their red color is lucky in China mm -hmm. and that's, you know what I mean? Yes. And it's just, it's so hard as a person with a marketing degree to market your own business. Yes, I could look at it as it's not my business, it's someone else's, but it's, yeah. I don't know how to describe it. It's so weird. Yeah, I mean, you can learn about the marketing strategy of a thousand different companies, but it's still not your company. Mm -hmm. So you have to take... And you don't thousand, want to copy that strategy. Right, you have to take a thousand ideas and you have to choose the ones that you the best and then not copy it, but yep. take that strategy, make it applicable to your business, and then market your business that way. Yep. But also, you said McDonald's as an example. McDonald's is been around, has been around forever. Mm -hmm. For a really long time. Forever for us. Literally. Um, <laughs> has been around forever. They have a worldwide platform, and they're in, what, every country? Pretty probably. much. Probably. Um, if not almost every country but they have so many locations in every country yes they're popular because they have a product that everybody wants mm -hmm. i mean who doesn't want to eat food and mcdonald's is delicious yep. even though i can't eat it because they aren't gluten-free in america just throwing that out there mcdonald's <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> get your stuff together <laughs> i miss you and i want to come back <laughs> um but <clears throat> you know it you don't have that same platform, that same following, mm -hmm. that same established business. Yeah. Because you're just not McDonald's. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can take their <clears throat> strategies and, and try and like your own. warp them into my own. Yeah, but unless you're but. selling salty French fries, you're mm -hmm. not going to get everybody to come and buy your stuff. No. But you can market it to the people that you want to market it to yeah. and make it applicable to them. And that's another thing that going to college for marketing did not teach me was how to they it, I was taught how to narrow down my niche of people mm -hmm. who I'm marketing towards, mm -hmm. you know, and, but they never taught you how to reach those people. Mm. I could see that. It's so, I don't know. I wish, I, I mean, I could go back since it's a little right on the street from where I live right now, but I wish I could go back and I always had my business when I went to college, but I wish I would have asked and said, can we Look at my learn business. how to apply yeah. this? Yep. I can say the same thing about teaching. We went to the same college. I mm -hmm. went for teaching, you went for marketing. Yep. Um, I felt that I, I felt at the end of my college career, I felt adequately prepared for the classroom. And then I got into the classroom and got my butt handed to me there was so much that i wasn't prepared for dude at the end of college i could write a 20 page scripted lesson, lesson plan and i could nail it nobody's business it was the best and then you apply it to an actual classroom and you're there's a fire there's a fire there's a fire now i gotta put out all these fires but that's not in my 20 page scripted lesson plans yeah. i felt prepared that i could plan a bomb lesson but I didn't feel prepared to deal with the kids. Yes. All of the things that come with children. Obviously, college can't teach you everything, you no. know, but they should try. Yeah, and I will say, on the positive side, my college did, or our college, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> our college did, and my education program did a really fantastic job of getting us into classrooms and experiencing mm -hmm. classroom life, and not just saying, here's a made-up classroom, write a lesson plan, here are the 20 kids, and they're all perfect. 
that wasn't my reality. Yeah. So I did have a lot of in-classroom experience, but until you are the person in charge of your classroom, your business, mm -hmm. you have to do what works best for that classroom. Yep. I've been teaching for six years. Every single year has been different. And I teach middle school, so I have four different classes every year. Every class is different. Mm -hmm. So realistically, if you think about it, I've had 24 classes in six years. Mm -hmm. And they're all different. Yeah. So I get it. College is... For the longest time, it was everybody needs a four-year degree in order to get a job. But now it's, well, I don't have, I have a four-year degree. I have a master's degree and in education, but I still started my mm -hmm. business and I'm successful. Yep. So you don't have to have... You don't have to have a degree I to know. do what you want. Yeah. And this lights a fire inside <laughs> of me. I love my parents. I yep. love them. But... Growing up, it was go to college, yep. go to college, get a degree, you'll get a good job, you'll live great, you'll have so much money. Granted, yes, I own my own business, but bull. Yeah. When we got sent home from COVID, I wish I never went back. Yeah. Because I was really debating on not going back to college because one, I fell out of love with hockey. I didn't do it anymore. Sure. Two, I was already having a kind of successful business. Right. So did I really need to go back? And also, I I feel like I just wasted a hundred thousand dollars. That's how much my loans are. Yeah. To go to college. Yep. And yeah, I could go out and get a corporate job or a normal job and be able to pay my bills. But that's still my one of my best friends. She works at a bank. She's a teller. She went to the same school I did. She. Mm -hmm. Has less in lungs than I do. Lucky her. But it's even hard for her to still live. Mm -hmm. Because of, granted, yes, wages are a tiny bit higher. Mm -hmm. But not a lot to where we can actually live. Because of all the expenses that we do have and inflation. and Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> wages are higher than they were before. But the cost but of living... Can we talk about TikTok shop for a second? Yeah. I've had two, two TikTok shop orders. Really? Yep. That's good. It, yeah. That's really good. I, I don't, but I can't integrate it with Shopify. Just, <laughs> just for the sake of inventory. Mm-hmm. That's it. I really don't I care. I mean, technically you can integrate it with Shopify, but you have to pay for it on the Shopify end and you have to pay for it on the TikTok shop end. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think that if I had more drive to learn TikTok shop, I think I mm -hmm. could be more successful with it. Um, but I, it just seemed <sighs> another thing, another thing to try to figure out. And I had at like the same time that I was opening up my TikTok shop, I opened up Shopify and closed my square one. So I was already learning Shopify, already learning something new. Mm -hmm. And then TikTok shop started blowing up and I was fine. I'll get TikTok. Fine. I'll get a TikTok shop. Because the last time we recorded, I didn't have TikTok. And yeah. And now summer, yet TikTok. Over the summer, I do now have TikTok. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I just, I think it's good. I don't that I can't say my website on TikTok mm -hmm. because then they what what are they, they block that video yes. like they make you delete it. I haven't had an issue where I needed to delete it, but they said that they weren't gonna push it out. Or there's a violation. Yes, and I tried to mm -hmm. appeal it, and I was I'm new to TikTok. I didn't know. Yeah, and they're denied. Oh, yep. Okay. I have okay. So when they brought TikTok shop, I right away started doing it because if you use the new features that TikTok adds, they're more to push out your content more. So I got TikTok shop, loved it. Mm -hmm. I had multiple videos go right, like viral, viral. Yep. 3 million, 4.8 million. And you've had a lot of success. Yeah. At, at the beginning, you've had a lot of success. Yes. And now I don't know why, but my videos are not getting shown anymore. Mm -hmm. It's this is very good like don't get me wrong but it's just not good f for me and what I'm kind of used to I'm used to the range of 10 to 20 and I'm not kidding you the past two months 
I get lucky if my video gets shown to has 3,000 views. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Some videos I'll take TikTok shot of the item. Some videos I just won't. Mm -hmm. Some videos I use music. I, but what sucks is that you can't use the good music. You have to use the crappy, non-copyright music. And I just want to like switch my business account back to personal. And I love TikTok shop because I just randomly get TikTok shop orders just out of nowhere for the most randomest stuff. And it's really nice to have that. But it's so annoying having to not have the good sounds. Yeah. Um, maybe you can speak to this more, but I don't understand TikTok shops sales that they run. Okay. Because you posted a video not that long ago. Look, someone bought this for one penny. Mm -hmm. And it's, okay, but who actually pays for the cost of your So... Because that would be really expensive for TikTok, wouldn't it? Yes, but if you think about it, all the businesses that are paying for advertisement... True. It probably... they pro I don't know this for sure, obviously. Don't work for TikTok. But they... I want... This is how it is in my head. Other people might have opinions about this or think other stuff, but I think whatever money they make from advertisements and that stuff, they use that to take or do the difference of those products because they make so much in ads. And you know what I mean? So yeah. I feel they're still making a ton of ads and they're taking maybe a sixteenth of the ads that is getting spent and giving it to the business owners. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I just TikTok don't does give you the difference. My straws are four dollars and someone bought it for a penny. Mm -hmm. They give me that three ninety nine. Okay. I wasn't sure about that because mm -hmm. I I know one of the TikTok shop sales that I got was it had free shipping. And I was like, well I'm pretty sure actually that I charge shipping. Mm -hmm. But then I don't I don't remember if I actually got paid out for that but yeah because it was sometime this past summer um but yeah I just wasn't sure about yeah like, they're giving really really good discounts mm -hmm. whoa yeah I think it would be stupid if they had that it's going to a mall and let's say you go to Lululemon it's the mall, the building, West Acres Mall. That's our mall. No one knows that. But it's going to Lululemon and West Acres saying, giving someone a coupon. I mean, here's 50% off your entire right. order. Lululemon's, what the hell, man? Yeah. I'm trying to make money here. Yep. What are you doing? Just giving out coupons for my place, you know? And so I feel tiktok would not be smart if they like did that right and but they oh are they are doing that in a sense yeah but they're paying you the difference yeah to, so, then, like, so in, that it doesn't mess up anything yeah so then in your situation mm -hmm. the mall then would pay the extra 50 percent yeah the other 50 percent. Yeah. yeah if the mall is hey we'll give you the other 50 percent we're just trying to get more people into the of, building it seems kind of silly too though because you know Let's say, and I'm sure this is true, but Lululemon pays the mall rent, mm -hmm. and then they take that rent money and give coupons, and like pay. So it just seems Lululemon would be paying for it regardless. See, that's also where I don't understand. For instance, our mall does gift cards. Yeah, and you can use those gift cards anywhere. anywhere. Right. So yeah, I I don't understand it. I don't know. Come on, you have a marketing degree. Oh, yeah, I should know <laughs> everything. Okay, but also, I want to talk about this because it... I don't mean to be rude. This isn't towards you or anyone. I'm just saying this in general. I don't mean to... This has been bothering me a lot, so that's why I really wanted to talk about this. But I don't mean to be rude. But when people constantly ask, Hey, I'm doing this. What should I do? Hey, I'm looking for this. Do you know where I could look for it? Yes, there's some things that I have in my bio. 
Where I get my stickers from, my packaging tape, custom poly mailers. So talking about your blanks. Yes. Your products. And I constantly have to be saying, I'm sorry, I don't share that information. And I know not everyone knows that, that I, that I don't share it. But I feel we need to start normalizing. Yeah. Not asking that. Yes. I guess some businesses are very open and they share that stuff. But it's just personally, I've spent so much money, so much time mm -hmm. researching good blanks, filling out blanks, ordering blanks, getting them in, having to return them, all that stuff. And also people asking for advice on certain situations. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a business coach. Right. And yes, I would love to help you because yes, I've gone through this or yes, I'm dealing with this and I found a such solution to it, but it gets to be so frustrating, especially when people could go on YouTube and look it up or open up Google and look yeah. it up. It's just, I almost just want to be like, hey, I'm opening up one-on-one -on -one sessions if you want to talk about it, but I also don't want to do that. Right. Yeah. I have a couple thoughts about that. I have the, I can see both sides. The person asking and then you being asked. Mm -hmm. So as the person asking, really, they're trying to use their resources. By asking other businesses who have gone through it, that is using a resource. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, they can't just go to you as a business and say, resource tell me where you get everything yep. and then not try to look anywhere else. Yep. So like if you're really, really struggling and really, really trying to find good blanks, find good products, find whatever, it's okay to ask questions, but then you have to be okay if someone With says, saying, someone saying no. It. Yeah. Just here's what I searched in the searcher. Sorry, I don't give that information up. I've had a couple people when I say, Sorry, I don't share that information. Mm -hmm. That's just my doing. No. Well, this person shares it, so why don't you? Then go ask oh, that that's, person. Th that's because it's just, it's me. Right. I don't want to. That's right. that's good for that person that they want to. So go to them. Yeah. But There's don't nothing, be yeah. rude. So then, so then the side of the person asking, I get it. They're trying to use a resource. Whatever. Yes. But then as the person being asked, it's you've spent how much time trying to mm -hmm. research buying things returning things yep. using your time using your money using and it's not i'm not willing to share anything right i mean i've asked you things yeah. where do you get your packing tape or yeah. your water activity yeah. what um businesses do you buy your polymers from you know when you used to do apparel and stuff and or boxes where do you get your boxes i get my boxes from uline yeah. or sometimes amazon it depends on how fast i need them uline's pretty good but uh, but then, but then with that, it's, that's not something that's harming the exclusivity of your business. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that you are, you're not entitled, you're not trying to be malicious, but at the same time, it's, you have the right as a business owner yeah. to have some exclusivity with your Like, with you're products. not going to go into Lululemon and, granted, they don't sell other brands with their stuff on it I guess but you're not gonna go into them and be like where'd you get this made yeah and you know where you got this made that's granted I'm not that big yeah I'm nowhere near as big as that but it's it's still just a little bit yeah rude I feel and like don't get me wrong we all start somewhere mm -hmm. and we all have questions and stuff but it's also kind of just yes it's easier to ask someone especially a business that you trust and that you but it's also okay to take it into your own hands and just do a ton of research because I'm not going to tell you where I get my blanks from because that's what sets my business apart from other businesses. Yeah, I could definitely see you or anybody in the same situation as you saying, well, I'm not going to tell you where specifically, but yeah. like, this is how I started searching. And, well, like, and that's why plug, plug these keywords in. Yeah, all, all you have said it to a couple people I said and I'll share it but um where you can start is try google searching blank wholesale apparel mm -hmm. there is there's a ton of links that show up and normally the first five are what I use mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I'm not specifically telling you who I use, but right. I'm giving you the resource to know. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I've now I've switched up so much of my stuff, but so I don't don't really use it any of my wholesalers anymore for my blanket apparel but well and then at the same time too there are business coaches out there mm -hmm. you 100 percent can go online or on social media or wherever and type in how to find blank apparel mm -hmm. and then you can see business coaches of people who have businesses you who on the side also coach mm -hmm. it might cost you some to get that coaching but if you, yeah. someone like me, for example, I have a full-time job, my business is my side job. I don't necessarily have all the time, all the experience, all of the whatever to like get my business up and mm -hmm. going without trial and error. I, if I wanted to just go and do it and get it right the first time, I probably would want to spend the money to learn a lot about it. Not necessarily getting a degree, but getting a good solid background, a good yep. foundation in order to get my business up and running. Yep. But that's me personally. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't take offense if I ask you a question and you tell me I don't look there. I asked. The worst you could say is no. Yeah. You know that. And this is me personally. Yeah. I don't take offense to that. But I also know you. I could be girl. Girl, like me. you are my <laughs> friend. Yes. Well, but even with friends, I'm. I want to help you. Yeah. I do. But it's just, it's a lot of work. Well, and you and I have had a lot of good conversations about me starting my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And you're not telling me what to do. I will ask you very specific questions <laughs> and you will be like, it's fine. Just try it. Yeah. Like, it's okay. You will tell me advice without telling me what to do. And I super appreciate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I've actually told you this, but I really appreciate you helping me mm -hmm. with that. But I also understand that... For one, I can't do what you're doing. We have different products. We have different lives. We have mm -hmm. different people. And then two, I can't expect you to tell me what to do because you're my friend and not my boss or not my coach or whatever. I can take advice from you and mm -hmm. I ask for advice, but I'm definitely not looking for, Sarah, here's what you need to do. Yeah. And I'm also not looking for, leave me alone. Yeah. Don't talk to me. So, I mean, we have a really good balance as friends, mm -hmm. but, you know, just anybody asking, I feel it's okay to hear the words no. Yeah. It's okay. It's not a bad thing. No. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but, like, it's not a bad thing, but it's not a good thing. Right. For both sides. No. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I'm really going with this, but... It's, even if you hear no, it's not a bad thing because at least you tried and you can always look somewhere else. There's tons of resources nowadays. My dad tells me every day, well, back when I went to school, I didn't have Google or whatever. You can just look it up. And I'm okay, dad. Yeah. If I'm, build, I'm wanting to build something, I'm like, dad, how do you build this? And he's like, I don't know, YouTube it. Yeah. Andy, you're supposed to be my handy Andy. What are you doing? But I love that. Yeah. But no, I mean, there are millions of resources out there. I mean, and There's I'm counting so like, many. people, I'm counting books, I'm counting YouTube and all the videos. And I know there. that sounds so boring. A lot of work. But sometimes but that's what you have to do. But nobody opens a business on day one and is 100% successful mm -hmm. you're gonna and have know ups. what you're they're doing have, yes you're gonna have ups you're gonna have downs you're mm -hmm. gonna have successes you're gonna have failures that's just part of owning yeah. a business and I mean this is slightly changing topics too but you've gotten or you do launch days that's how you like, put out your product is you'll have a group of products you put them out at the same time that's your launch yep I mean you have I would say success with that even though you might not get a hundred sales and sell out all of your launch it's mm -hmm. still successful because you're getting sales for me yep. personally my failure as a business is i will have a launch day maybe i didn't market it enough maybe this that the other thing but i will have a launch day and a launch time and i will have no sales mm -hmm. it'll just be crickets so 
you can't do everything exactly the same as another business and expect the exact same Expect result. the same outcome. Yes. Yeah. And I don't have the following that you do, so mm-hmm. I can't expect the exact same amount of sales or the exact same success because, yeah. yes, I try to emulate what you do and I try to take your strategies and make them work for my business, changing them, whatever, but mm-hmm. also I have to understand that I'm not... Front of M and Co. I'm SP Handmade. I have mm-hmm. to do what works best for my business. Yeah. So. And something else about taking things from another small business and creating it into your own. I not specifically for my business, but I follow other YouTube businesses, and they've had so many people literally just. I'm not saying you do this. I'm just saying, talking about in general, but they said that another business literally took what they do. Mm-hmm. Every time. What they said in a video, they will word for word do it in theirs. It's fine in a sense, but you need to give credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. And another thing, I'm so sick of people commenting hate comments specifically if I do something a certain way for instance folding my tissue paper the smallest little detail will tick people off and be you're copying this business like or they'll just tag the business or you know what I mean and it's I'm it's I'm folding tissue paper yeah I could fold it in half Mm-hmm. Or I can do it the three thing that I do. Folding your people, paper into thirds is not a new No thing. one invented it. Or well, someone like, did, but... They don't own it. They exactly. They own that way to fold And they're not the paper. first people to do it. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. it just annoys me how fast people are to jump to conclusions. Mm-hmm. Oh, this girl's doing exactly what they did. Oh, because she brought in this. Now she's bringing that. Yeah. She's literally doing everything that you're doing. And I get that to a sense. But sometimes... But you gotta hop on trends. Yes. For example, coffee koozies. Yeah. I saw a business launch coffee koozies. And I was oh, I would love to do those. But I'm gonna not, do those. You're not doing the exact same style. You're not doing everything they did. You're making yeah. it your businesses. Because it's with my graphics. Yes. And there are big companies mm-hmm. that sell coffee koozies. But... You're not doing the same thing that they're doing. No. I mean, you have to make it your own. Yeah. But that's but, a trend. But people think because... They don't own a trend. That person launched coffee cozies. And I was like, okay, I want to launch coffee cozies. And now everyone's launching coffee cozies. Did all, we all copy that one person? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. But that's what's trending. People are loving it. That's what businesses do. Yes. Is and follow trends. If... If one small business launched it and then two weeks later you launch it, well, mm-hmm. your followers are like, oh, well, they did that, but I don't their design as much as this other one. So they might buy from you versus them or yeah. them versus you. Yeah. They're going to buy from whoever they yeah. the graphic of. They're not always buying because it's your company. We have to give our customers credit. Like, yeah. They're going to choose what's best for them. And you know what? If they want to give me hate... Yeah. Don't buy my stuff. Go buy yeah. from somebody else. For example, I've been wanting to come out with bookmarks because I love reading. I have, yeah. you've seen my room. I have that, yeah. those three bookshelves or whatever filled and or the shelvings. And mm-hmm. I've been wanting to come out with bookmarks, but a business that I follow and that I love, Allie Rose Co., she has bookmarks and they've been so successful. Mm-hmm. And she sells out and I'm so proud of her. And But I don't want to come out with bookmarks and have people think that I'm copying her or that I'm coming out with bookmarks because hers do so well so I automatically think mine are going to do well like that's yeah. not the case at all I also love reading yeah. and right now I use a napkin Dude, as my bookmark you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's why I want to come out with bookmarks and I think it'd be so much fun and but I just I don't it's always the little tiny person in the back of my head saying people are going to think that you're copying her yeah but people are going to think you're copying this business but at the same time if you don't release bookmarks right now 
when you decide to release them mm -hmm. a month later or two months later to, to appear that you're not copying, mm -hmm. they're out of style. No yep. one's going to buy them. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's and I'm not what well, and I'm not saying I want I really want to do them because they're trending right now or because mm -hmm. she's selling out all the time. I want to do them because I love them and I think it'd be so much fun. Yes. But what's holding me back is the hate that I might receive. Yep. I had someone comment on one of my YouTube shorts and they commented this business name and I've never heard of them. And so I went to go check them out and we both have, um, a, we're both pink for our logo and stuff, but we're different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there, this reminds me of this company. And I'm like, okay. But in my head, I'm an overthinker. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do they mean? I know I've never done, I'm yeah. I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. You know? Because I've never even knew this business. I've never even seen any of their stuff. And, but in my head, I'm like, what did I do wrong? Oh, no. And I'm going through and I'm like, we, we aren't a world, but we're not. Yeah. And then another business on Facebook, we almost have the same exact name. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my name is my name. Yes. With my maiden name. Obviously, I'm not married yet, but I will be married. But it's with my maiden name. And it, it's just a coincidence that we both have M and Co. They seem very lovely lady. Very nice. Love her packaging. Super cute. Her products are super cute. We sell different things. Mm -hmm. But we have a very similar name. And, but I'm just, why, why did you need to comment that? Yeah. Why do you need to comment, reminds me of blank. As a, some people might take that as, oh, thank you. Yeah. But as a business owner, what do you mean? Yeah. Because so many people are, are right away to copying. Yeah. Do the same thing. I My initial thought when you said that was, okay, cool. I remind you of them. Like, yeah. Is, that must be a good thing because you must that company and I give you the same vibe or whatever. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's, but I get what you're saying. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I am thankful and lucky i haven't gotten a lot of hate comments and the comments that i that i get i just kind of laugh at them because you're taking this way too seriously yeah. i did that tiktok series of yeah the, the types of customers you see craft fairs. craft fairs and i had a lot of people who were commenting this is so rude to your customers and i'm just it's funny <laughs> i'm not making fun of my customers i'm just showing the types of I, I would have yeah i'm kind of making fun of my customers i also make fun of myself i made yes. that video at the fargo street fair of yeah. the types of craft fair sellers yes i'm all of them yeah it depends on my mood that day yeah, i will so stare you down i don't know i'll just, just smile i try really hard to just laugh off all of the yeah the hate comments that i get but i don't really get a lot so i yeah i can relate but i can't relate but no but i totally agree that calling you out as a business because of the way you fold your tissue paper is so i fold my tissue paper the same way how dare you we can't be oh friends gosh. anymore no i was gonna say actually if you start selling bookmarks i'm gonna say that you're copying me because i sell bookmarks but mine are made out of clay <laughs> but then i can still do it i know because they're, they're different because they're different but oh i don't know it's just it gets me so frustrated, and the amount... I, I don't understand why people feel the need to waste their energy on typing a hate comment. It's so much... Don't work. get it. I know for a fact that we said this in our last podcast yeah. video. It is so much extra work to be mean. Literally. Why do you have that much hate built up in you? Yeah. It makes you wonder. That only if makes you really, more exhausted. I know. It makes you wonder if these people are really actually mad at you as the business or if they're just mad in general and now you And then just the, taking it out on you. Yeah. You just happen yeah. to be the recipient. I had someone commented on four of my pictures. Random pictures. So back a couple months back, whatever. And they're like I think it was on my the pretty girls have anxiety too when mm -hmm. I first launched them, those pictures. And someone was I don't know, something about my weight. That oh. pretty girls don't... I don't know exactly what it was, but I want to say it was pretty girls don't look you or pretty girls aren't overweight or something like that. And I'm, 
Do you have low self-esteem? Yeah. I already have low self-esteem. I don't need you telling me what that's my so body looks. That's so I already funny. deal with that enough. Yeah. Don't people, say that. People just get so much more confident when they're typing it out. Like, they can hide behind a screen. They can hide behind a screen. This is me off. Words and if the same person was at your booth. Yeah. You think they would say that, that to me? They would not have said that. To no. Me. And if they did, what the hell? Well, I'm just. I don't get what kind of persona people think that they're bringing on when they message hate comments or they t they post message hate comments. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Say it to my face. Yeah. Would you actually? What you typed out, would that actually be what you said, would say to my face? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Um, that and your whole business is based on, um, positivity mm -hmm. and supporting mental health. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> the fact that people are sending, I don't mean to laugh because it's really not funny, but the fact but that people are giving you so much hate. For spreading mental health awareness and positivity. Yes. Makes <laughs> no sense. I no mean, sense. Maybe that's what we just need to do is we just need to laugh it off for a second and just know yeah. that what you are doing is better than what they're doing because you are spreading spreading mental health awareness and positivity and they are spreading hate. Yep. I've cried way too many times over hate comments. And you shouldn't like, have to. You shouldn't have it's to. It's always about the way I look. Which and is And it so pisses sad. me off. Because I already don't the way I look sometimes. Can you shut up? Like but you know what? We we're we're okay over here yeah. with the hate. We do that enough inside of our head. Keep it to yourself. But you know what? I think I truly believe that if you had a hired model who is a stick figure, mm -hmm. like modeling the smallest size that you make, you would not get as much orders and as much of a following as you have. Because you are showing a real person. Yeah. And I am a little bit heavier. Yeah. I appreciate that you have sizes that accommodate for me. I also appreciate that you model your own stuff. And you mm -hmm. don't hire out the tiniest person that you can find. Yeah. And I'm not saying anything mean towards you, I promise. No, 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 you're not, I'm you're not, you're saying, not. You are a real person. You are showing people, real people in your products. Mm -hmm. And that makes me feel good about wanting to purchase your products yeah but if you had only models that were the size of my pinky i, I probably wouldn't want to like buy that. from you because i wouldn't know what your stuff would look on mm -hmm. me nothing irritates me more than seeing shopping online and seeing like cute clothes and i'm oh i wonder if that would be cute on me right i don't know if it will because she's very small not a lot of curve to her so i don't think it'll look at me so then i don't buy it right not exactly. saying like it's like that's my marketing strategy is using me but i feel yes models are real people mm -hmm. but i feel when you the, the average person isn't a model yes so and so people relate to you more yes. exactly. sort of thing exactly and i don't know i just i feel not only are you spreading mental health awareness and positivity through your products by what the messages say by whatever but you're also i mean you're you're catering to the majority of people instead of an average person instead of just i don't know the people who apparently need to comment yeah things about what you look so Stupid. annoying. Ugh. It takes so much more energy to be mean. <laughs> Literally. I feel like this entire podcast is just me ranting. That's okay. <laughs> I've had so much build up. Like, okay. I've been waiting. But I feel like, it, like it's good for this podcast because yeah. I, I feel like it's just kind of a brain dump. Yeah. Because, uh, yes, I'm very transparent and everything on my YouTube channel for mm -hmm. my YouTube videos. But I feel sometimes I can't just, you know blurred everything out yeah because it's gonna take over an hour no one wants to watch a two hour video and an hour of me just going ah! 
<laughs> you know? Uh, instead, you bring on a guest, so that way you have a reason yes. to... Yes. Uh, and it's... Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, so for everyone who's viewing or listening, whichever platform you're, you know, listening on, um, I haven't done a podcast since... Like February. Yeah, February, before I went on, like, vacation, probably. And that's just because I... I was holding myself to a certain standard where I was posting a podcast video every Wednesday and it's hard talking with yourself like there's a lot of things that you can talk about I could have ranted all that stuff I ranted on here to you guys separately like by myself but it's not fun not having someone else there with you yeah and like keeping the conversation going and making it flow and making yeah. it feel comfortable if it's just me talking it's kind of like I'm just talking to a mirror yeah or a brick I wall also feel having another person on gives an extra perspective yeah when we were talking about um people asking where you get your blanks like, yeah I am coming from a side where I'm not getting that question asked mm -hmm. me so I can tell you kind of a different perspective yeah. and you can kind of see both sides and your viewers can see both sides <clears throat> too um but yeah I definitely think that talking to yourself on video is yeah. not the easiest thing well, to do and this just feels more like a facetime call yeah. you know mm -hmm. I want you guys to feel <clears throat> sorry to feel you're in on this conversation with us yes you're not able to reply in real time <laughs> but that was the most dramatic part. I don't know what it was but you're still able to feel like you're here with us and I feel like it's just hard when you when it's just one person you don't see any podcast where it's just one person besides someone maybe telling a true crime story or something you know yeah but so that's why I haven't done one since then. I just felt like it was too much. And I don't plan on making this a weekly thing or a bi-weekly thing. Maybe once a month. Just a brain dump. Because I feel like sometimes business owners just need that. Or just mm -hmm. people in going through life in general need it. And so... I will say that because in preparation for coming over today and trying to think of things for us to talk about, I went back and watched your old podcast videos yeah. especially with Megan and myself um and they had a lot of really good comments oh we believe listening to another yeah. person we literally yeah and not that they're sick of you by any means but no but it just adds another perspective because they yes. hear me every f twice a week yeah but talk. now but we're also talking about things that you don't necessarily always show on your mm -hmm. youtube videos the sides of hate comments the sides mm -hmm. of frustration in your business and you know that yeah but yeah, so I plan on doing this probably once a month. Sarah might be here more often than you think. I might also try and get maybe a couple other business owners. Um, you know, Megan and like maybe my friend Hannah who owns Scribble Lady. Maybe that. I don't know. I just want to make this kind of brain dump and get different perspectives from other people and... Just kind of have fun with it and be able to be super transparent about everything yeah. that goes on behind the scenes. So, nice to be here. of course. Well, it's nice to just have someone else because yeah. I don't see people really. Yeah. You hide in your house. Yeah, I hide in my little hobbit hole. Um, but yeah, uh, where can people find you at? Um, people can find me at SP Handmade or wait. People can find me at shopsphandmade.com is my website. Um, and then I am on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook with basically the same name. Okay. I'll have everything linked to in the description as well for you guys that are watching it on YouTube. We're going to go ahead and we're going to end this podcast, of course. But we need to figure out a name for this podcast. It can be business related, it can be not business related, whatever you guys really feel. But I need to figure out a name for this podcast because I think that'd be really fun. And yes, this isn't gonna be something that happens every week, but I think it's gonna be fun to integrate it into my content. So yeah. yeah. So comment down below what you guys um, want it to be named. I think that'd be kind of cool. So bye guys. Bye.